You mentioned your dad. He passed away uh, two, uh, a year and a half ago. Yeah. What did you learn from him? I love my dad. My dad, I would say my dad was my my hero. He was just, uh, my dad really embodied those values. And I think um, for better or worse, it's made me who I am. He's, he, uh, my dad was, was a painter. He was a lawyer. He was a, uh, he was a, uh, you know, a lieutenant in the military. He New Yorker? New Yorker, born and bred Brooklyn. His dad, his dad, you know, uh, surprise, owned a diner. So that's. <laughs> <laughs> that's sort of the Greek passport. Uh, that's the immigration passport for Greeks into America. And um, yeah, my dad played football. He just, my dad did what he wanted. He lived as he wanted at all costs. And I think I got that from him for better or worse. I think it's hurt me in my pursuits. Uh, if, if you consider money and fame uh, to be paramount, you know, I, I've always done what I wanted. And if I stop wanting to do it, I just stop doing it. And I think I got that from my dad. So maybe for better or worse, that's what I learned from him. But that's a real currency, you know, feeling like you're in love with what you're doing when you're doing it. Maybe perhaps that's worth more than money. I don't know. You miss him? Yeah, every day, every day. But I'm happy that uh, he he got 91 years. It's that's very rare. rare. I mean, he smoked for 60 years. Talk about like a guy who was an outlier. I mean, he smoked like 60 years, like packs. I mean, yeah. and he didn't die from that. He died, he had uh, prostate cancer, which is the way men should go. Your dick should give out. It should start from the dick. I mean, we focus so much of our life on the dick yeah. that that's the way, that's a successful life. And that's why every man eventually gets prostate cancer because that is the universe's way of saying like, the thing you focused on the most is, you put the most energy into is the thing that's spent. <laughs> and it's gonna your your rotting is gonna start there. So that's a successful life. And it just spread all over his body and he slowly died. I was with him when he died, and that meant a lot to me. Because me and my brother weren't talking at the time because we're Greeks. Uh, <laughs> we're we're talking again, but that's how it is. You got a few brothers, right? I got two brothers. But I wanted to make sure I was with him uh when he died and I got lucky and I was in the room with him when he died. You were in the room with your brother and you weren't no, my brother wasn't there. We were kind of doing shifts. I was, I was there. I spent the night. The dad, my, the the night my dad died. He died in the early in the morning, and I heard the the death rattle, the last breath, and it was just. I think it was. Uh, I he knew I was there, and uh, I think that just probably meant something to him. And I'm just glad I was there. Does that make you sad that uh, life is ephemeral, like you said? Like yeah. That that you die. Yeah. What do you think about your own death? You uh, meditate on that. I think it I think the actual if there is a point to life it's to um hopefully not fear death to accept reality. I think that's important. I think so much goes awry in the human condition when we lose touch with reality. Every uh political system that's led to mass murder and everything I think because it's because the the tenets of those political philosophies ended up being utopian. They were detached from reality, detached from nature. And so I think it's in, it's very important to accept and acknowledge your own mortality. I think it's the foundation for what makes a good person, a moral person, um, a contributing member of society, because it's true. True things should be the foundation of all things. If, right. if, if, if what you believe is based on illusion, you're going to end up doing destruction. Whether that destruction is on a scale of one to 10, you are going to be destructive because it's not real. It's a fantasy. It doesn't exist. See, the thing is, though, truth is about, I don't think you can ever reach truth. Truth is about like constantly digging. And to push back in your idea that you should accept death, I think the more honest response to death, so the least honest is to run away from it, create illusions that help you imagine like there's not a death. Uh, the next is to accept it, but the real honest one is to fear it because I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm with uh, Ernest Becker as a philosopher uh, who wrote a book called Denial of Death. He says that the, like much of the human condition is based in the fear of mortality, that we, like that's, that's the creative force of the human energy. Like Freud said, do you want to sleep with your mother? He said, no, that's not w what motivates you. Maybe his mom wasn't hot though, I mean. Or he wasn't Greek, because apparently Oedipal, we, we found we found it all things good and bad. Yeah. You've, thanks. Thanks for that. <laughs> thanks. I just don't know if his mom was a looker or not. I mean, I'd have to t Google it. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll look up on Google Images. Yeah. No, no, but I think that honest, as he says, the thing that we run away from is that there's a terror. He calls it like terror. 
Uh, there's something called terror management theory that's some philosophers after him followed on that were basically trying to run away from this fear. And acceptance is actually creating an illusion for yourself. Like you can actually accept something as terrifying as this. So he's more with the Stoics. The Stoic constantly meditate on their death. I mean, they. what does that mean? I mean, it's kind of, it's, you know, acceptance of death isn't a thing you do like on a Monday and then you're done. It's a thing you constantly have to meditate on, like reminding yourself, like this ride is over. It could be over today. And that's something you're, if you think about every single day. It gives you an appreciation of Woody yeah. Allen movies, at least. <laughs> it gives you appreciation <laughs> of basically everything, including Woody Allen movies, which shows you how deep your appreciation for life could be. I've actually haven't been following much about what Woody Allen's, but apparently he's been a troublemaker through my, most of his life. He's yeah, I mean you know he's caused a little bit of strife. He's left a little uh, yeah, he's left a little confusion in his wake for sure. <laughs> but I mean you know that's another one. Separate the art from the artist. He's got. I mean the guys will go down in history as the greatest. He's made. I mean a movie a year, and they're all. You can always find something good about each movie, like the dialogue or whatever. Um, I love what you're saying. It's interesting. But the only thing I would say to push back a little bit, since we're playing a little table tennis here, yeah. is um, I don't know if it's a choice to fear death. That's more of an, it seems more instinctual. It seems like something that nature wants you to do because I've been in positions where I thought I was going to die. Like I've been shot and I had those moments. And then nature also, uh, you know, kicks in an instinct, which is acceptance, where you kind of, uh, I don't know, it's a chemical release or whatever. I don't know, you know. <laughs> we're all we're robots basically so yeah. some sort of chemical is released that protects you but there is an acceptance i don't know how much uh of it was a conscious choice probably very little um and that's the point i'm making is it's it's instinctual we don't really have a choice in fearing death otherwise there would be no progression we wouldn't all life seems to want to survive uh not by choice but by instinct so he, he argues that the fear is not the instinctual level, it's not the animalistic stuff. That's the thing that makes us special, is the what humans are able to do is to have a knowledge that we're going to die one day. Animals don't have that. Animals' fear is instinctual. Right. It's like, holy shit, what's that sound over there? He says we're actually able to contemplate the fact that this ride ends. And that that kind of cognitive construct is difficult for us to deal with. Like, what the hell does that mean? Like. Just to just to think about it's going to be over at, at a certain point. Like it's just over, lights out. Like to, it's very difficult to kind of load that into whatever this like little brain we got. Like what does that actually mean? 